G'day everyone, my name's Will, and welcome to the May 2022 edition of Australian Model Railway News, where we'll go through all the new updates, announcements, as well as exhibition news that is happening in the Australian Model Railway scene. Australian Model Railway News is supported by ABR Model Works, who have a range of 3D printed parts for your model railway. And don't forget to use the code 8MRN22 at checkout for 10% off your orders, which helps out you and also supports this channel. As well as that, this video is made possible by Patreon, where you can support these videos and others for as little as a dollar a month. And of course, don't forget to be subscribed so you can keep up to date with all the videos that I've got coming out in the future. Now, let's get into the news. To kick off this month, Australian Railway Models announced a new 38-class locomotive, the iconic Legend of Steam 3801. Now, there isn't too much out, aside from that we have to assume that a few things, like the mechanism and the tooling, will stay the same as the other 38s that ARM have previously released. However, they've said that it does feature reportedly new tooling and design. Now, I'm not entirely sure what will be different aside from the paint scheme and the added Newcastle Flyer headboards that will be any different from the previous Streamline 38 class ARM have released, which I did review a few episodes ago. Now, the retail price on this is $299 Australian, which is outstanding once again to be able to get a ready to run steam locomotive, Australian prototype steam locomotive into the hands of modelers. Now, I've already put my order in at my local hobby store, which is Train World in Melbourne, and I would encourage others to do the same as previous ARM models have sold out. Anyway, very exciting news from ARM. Buck and Bull model trains are now offering a wide range of DCC sound projects for a number of Australian steam locomotives. These projects have been developed over a number of years to suit HO models produced for the Australian market and feature recordings from preserved and operational locomotives, as well as archival recordings. These feature accurate loco whistles, compressors, steam generators, and guards whistles, along with specific chuffs for two, three, and four cylinder locomotives. Whilst the projects are designed primarily for HO locomotives, they are also suitable for O and N scale locomotives. These sound projects are available for $25 each for loading to various types of Zimo sound decoders, which are also available from Buck and Bull model trains. Unfortunately, these projects are not available for ESU sound decoders. In addition to the steam locomotive project, a limited range of Australian diesel locomotive sound projects are also available. A comprehensive list of all sound projects are available and videos demonstrating a selection of these sound projects are available to view on the Buck and Bull Model Trains website. Victorian Railway's brass manufacturer train builder have announced some reruns in a limited quantity of seven car sets, which will comprise of AS first class coaches, BS second class coaches, CS baggage van, dining car and parlor car. This will also have the same set in VR blue with yellow stripes covering the post-war period of the spirit of progress. Also of interest is that some of the original welded carriages in the VR crimson with silver stripes, as well as buffet cars Wimra and Mitter Mitter in the same livery, with an anticipated delivery in the third quarter of 2023, as well as the first new production run of popular Victorian and South Australian e-sleeping cars, including the Hawthorne Green with black roof livery of the Overland, which ran between Melbourne and Adelaide. Train Builder will also offer VR red livery and sleeping car number five, which was painted in VR blue and yellow. Lastly, they are producing a very limited quantity of the Victorian Railway's 102 horsepower Walker rail car. The HO scale brass models will feature working headlights, marker lights, and a fully detailed interior with lighting, also with an anticipated delivery of third quarter 2023. Now they have said that everyone is welcome to place an order with Train Builder with no deposit required. Yeah. 
SDS models at the Rose Hill exhibition in Sydney had amongst their samples the 700 class South Australian Railways cars on show. They also gave us updates on a lot of their upcoming releases. With that, some updates on the 81 class locomotives with ESU sound decoders for the Mark 1 and Mark 2 assembly have arrived at their supply shop. Over the next few weeks, they'll complete and ship these models to Australia. Production is well underway for the Mark 3 and Mark 4 versions, and these will be shipped after the MHO and VHO series of brake vans. The South Australian Railways SO or SOC ore wagons are due into Port Botany later this month and will commence dispatching in early June. The Queensland Railways PCO or PCUY container wagon production is complete and they will be due in Sydney in a few weeks time and they should also arrive by late June. The Queensland Railways 1460 or 1502 class locomotives are in the assembly stage. They have ordered decoders and couplers and should have production samples ready in a few months time. The South Australian Railways 900 class locomotive chassis are now complete and the final colour selections are underway and they are looking forward to receiving some decorated samples shortly. Decoders, sounds and couplers are on order. However, these are from a supplier near Shanghai and due to their recent lockdowns, this is affecting their capability considerably. The Victorian Railways D3 class locomotive rerun They've said that these are progressing and that they do expect a new delivery in the third quarter of 2022. They've said that the first revised samples of the Victorian Railways k class locomotives have arrived recently and they have had them running at Melbourne at the Easter exhibition, which I did cover in last month's video. They now only have a few details to complete and they are now looking to adopt the KD scale head whisker couplers as an option for the front buffer beam mounting. This will be an included component and customers will have the option of a scale non-working coupler or a working KD coupler. New South Wales Government Railways LHO, LHY and KP class vans assembly has commenced. However, they are at the same factory as the 700 class carriages, so there may be a slight delay. New South Wales Government Railways S-Truck rerun. The early period versions with spoked wheels and buffers will be shipped shortly. Presently, they are waiting on components from the United States for completion. The upside, however, is in development of two new S-Truck underframe based wagons, perfectly suited to running with standard goods engines. T-Class locomotives are awaiting a production slot. This is slated for after the second batch of 81 classes. Victorian Railway's Y-Class engineering prototypes are being assembled and we expect the first sample shortly. New South Wales Government Railway's D50 or D53 class locomotive drawings are presently in development for both upgrades to the D50 and new designs for the D53. They'll have more information to share once the K-class engines are completed and are ready for production. They've said to expect order forms available by the third quarter this year. Australian National AKEX or RCEX steel coil wagon painted samples are due later in June with the production slated for the third quarter this year. Although we did see the first tooling samples on show at the Rose Hill and Aubrey exhibitions this month. We now have sample photos of the upcoming SDS release of the Tasmanian Government Railways Y-Class locomotives in HO scale. Via a post on Facebook, it is said that order forms should be available soon from the SDS website. They've also said that there has been some compromises on this model. The ride height is a little high because of the commonality with the West Australian F-Class the bogies are a little short, but once again stated it's a compromise with the West Australian F-Class and that there is only one version being tooled. Apparently there is another version, which is an air brake version, which had the hood on the other side and the grill relocated. And of course, no buffers. If you did want to make one of these, I guess you would have to kit bash it. The colour schemes and numbers are yet to be confirmed, but at least we have some samples now. And lastly, they've said that the New South Wales Railways MHO, VHO and DMC building development is now complete and painted samples are expected in July this year. Production will commence immediately as they sign off on the painted samples. The only new colours are the pattern for the varnish timber finish from some early vans. Similar tones but different application techniques than their end of platform cars. And the light purple brown for the commissioner's vans. West Edge 3D is a brand new 3D printing service bureau in the Lower Hunter Valley in New South Wales using state-of-the-art Stratus J55 Prime Full Color Polyjet 3D Printer. So what that means is a color 3D printer. They offer custom printing services in full color polyprimer resin. 
plus by their printing partners FMD or Filament Printing, Inflexible ABS, PLA and ASA, as well as carbon fiber reinforced ABS. They are also developing a range of their own products for sale in shop, starting with figures, structures and accessories for the scale modelers. Now they are producing their own color 3D scans and they can print them in any scale up to 112. The most popular so far being N, H, O, 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 Gauge 1 and G scale. So I guess we got a bit of a glimpse into the future at Rose Hill and I've actually got some of the models here. And this is just a little sample pack of these fully color printed 3D models, which is super cool. I mean, that is really amazing. I think in terms of 3D printing, we're coming a long way nice and quickly. And um, yeah, something really, really interesting. You can have really custom miniature figures on your layout using this service. As well as that, at the Rose Hill exhibition, you had Control P who had a N-scale New South Wales Railways uh, carriage, which had been fully color 3D printed. And that's, that's really awesome to see. And that's something that I'm very excited to find out more about. And if you are interested in contacting West Edge, I'll leave their website and details in the description below. Ixion models have now announced the Victorian Railways A2 class steam locomotive. The first bit of prototype information relating to the A2 is now going to the factory. As well as that, they also have LL and MM bogey stock wagons to manufacture and a rerun of 500 additional J class locomotives to make this year. So they doubt that they will see the A2 before the third or fourth quarter next year, or maybe even later into 2024. But that's really exciting for us Victorian um, collectors. Now they haven't said which numbers they're doing, although through the press pack they've kind of sent me here, there is a picture of the currently preserved A2. So fingers crossed for everyone who models from the turn of this last century through to now, that should cover everyone. But stay tuned for more information. Although no official news or updates from Ascision, at Rose Hill, we did have a lot of samples of the upcoming releases, being the 44s, the N-Scale NRs, wagons, ACI 44s, V-sets, and even the Overland cars, with some other bits and pieces. It was nice to finally see some of these in the flesh. They also had a sound fitted N-Scale 442 running around on some test track. Whiskey models have announced their latest wagon load, which is to be produced right here in Australia, or more specifically, Queensland. 32 foot spoil loads. They've said that these are great little loads designed to fit in all standard Queensland 32 foot wagons, as well as being able to be modified to suit many New South Wales open wagons. They've also said that obviously with all our loads, they're 100% DCC ready and completely cholesterol free. And they'll also set you back $15 a load. LT3D Designs is a 3D printing company who are producing New South Wales triple pack staunch and catenary in HO scale, based on the New South Wales prototype from the late 70s through to the current date. For example, these are for a triple track and measure 180 millimeters wide, 135 millimeters high, and comes with adjustable feet on both sides. The beam is H shape and is two and a half by two and a half millimeters. The four insulated wire arm points have internal pilot holes that make them easier to drill out and match your desired wire thickness. Pictured with standard size paperclip wires as a demonstration. The wires, however, are not included. The staunchions are flexible enough not to be super fragile and won't bend or break as easily. And these are priced $10 each with a flat rate for postage of $8.95. They also have a number of raw 3D printed loads available for coal and ballast hoppers like the NDFF wagons. These packs will be supplied as to allow you to glue whatever ballast or coal texture or color you prefer. 
in plain gray PLA. So if you are keen on these products, swing them a message on Facebook. Over at Wombat Models, regarding their popular C30T locomotives, at Rose Hill they did have expression of interest forms to see if collectors would be interested in colored variants on the C30Ts in either blue or green. If you are keen on one or three of these, just send them an email. And lastly, on track models at Rose Hill had some samples of their upcoming Louvre vans. Although no further details at this point, this announcement was covered in a previous episode. The 40 foot Louvres will be priced at $195 for a pack of three. And the same goes for the 56 foot vans. Now onto my own news. Pre-orders have finished for the radio equipped shirt and stickers. So if you are interested in one of them, they are now gonna be available in limited quantities and will ship during the month of June. Also, I still have limited stock available of some of the beanies and now that we're coming into winter, I'm sure that they're very much appropriate. Some other items have sold out and all the pins are now priced to clear. So if you are after any of these, they won't be rerun probably anytime soon or at all. So if you are after a bargain, now's your time. Now. On to exhibition news. Toowoomba Model Railway Club will have an open house on Saturday the 4th and Sunday the 5th of June with many layouts operating at the Toowoomba Showgrounds. There'll be a mini Model Railway Expo at Rail Heritage West Australia at Bassadon on Sunday the 5th of June. The Queen's Birthday Long Weekend in June will see the Ballarat Model Train Show on the 11th to the 13th at the Woodman Hill Recreation Centre in Ballarat. The Latrobe Valley Model Railway Association will hold their biannual Morwell Exhibition which will be held at the Kernoit Hall in Morwell on the 11th and 12th. Waverley Model Railway Club will have their exhibition on the 11th to the 13th to be held at the Brandon Park Community Centre Glen Waverley. In Adelaide, the Adelaide Model Railway Exhibition will be held at the Greyhound Park in Angle Park. On the 9th and 10th of July, the Railway Modellers Club of Queensland will hold its annual Pine Rivers Model Railway and Hobby Expo at the new, much larger venue of the South Pine Sports Association in Brendale, Queensland. The Store Model Railway Exhibition will be held in Stall on the 9th and 10th of July. Modelling the early days of the New South Railways Workshop will be held in Epping at the Dense Park Creative Centre. Regular attendees will be notified by post, or if you are interested, please contact ARM Magazine or you can contact them via this email. The All Gages Model Railway Club in Belmont, Brisbane will hold two big model train sales on the 31st of July and the other on the 27th of November with 50 plus tables of trains and paraphernalia. In Canberra on the 6th and 7th of August, the Malacca Model Railway and Scale Model Exhibition at the Malacca Special School will be held. The Australian Model Railway Association Victoria will be holding the 2022 Caulfield Model Railway Exhibition at the Caulfield Racecourse over the weekend of the 20th and the 21st of August with more details on their Facebook page and the event page. On the 6th of November, the Railway Modellers Club of Queensland will hold a buy, swap and sell as well as an open day at its club rooms in Brendale, Queensland from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. There will be about 50 or so tables of new and pre-loved items for sale as well as their layouts from N through to G gauge will be running. In Adelaide on the 3rd of September, modelling the Railways of South Australia Convention will be held at the Flinders Medical Centre in Bedford Park. On the 17th and 18th of September, Phillip Island and District Railway Modellers Incorporated Model Railway Exhibition will be held in Cowes, Phillip Island. The National N-Scale Convention will be held in Goulburn on the 7th to the 9th of October. They've said it's been three years since the last convention that was held in 2019, which was in Canberra. And this convention is all for the N-Scalers and not just for Australian modellers. They will also be having English, Scottish, Japanese, and of course, Australian layouts in attendance. One of these layouts will be Ross Balderstone's Newcastle 1899, a museum quality layout with tall ships, tugs, and the life as it was in the 1890s. He'll also be giving a presentation on it. There will be a number of traders specializing in N-Scalers, tools, and more. The cost has been reduced to $160 for the weekend, including meals that will be held from Friday night, the 7th of October to Sunday afternoon, the 9th of October. Other activities being arranged, not included at the cost of the convention, are a trip out to the Cookwell Railway Museum, which is about 70 kilometers from Goulburn for trike riding, and an afternoon at the Goulburn Heritage Museum on the 7th. There will also be up to 14 speakers, including hands-on clinics from many established and well-known modelers. Subjects including kit construction, airbrushing, decaling, weathering, tree building, model photography, silos and how they operate, painting backdrops, making tarps and programming locos and more. And lastly, the New England Model Railway Club presents the New England Convention 2022 
held over Saturday and Sunday, the 22nd and 23rd of October at the Armadale Bowling Club, the premier regional model railway convention. The convention will offer two full days of presentations, clinics, slayer displays, and retail stands. As well, there will be an optional banquet dinner with an after dinner speaker. Now that's all for exhibition updates. If you are in a model railway club and you are having an open day, an exhibition, or a buy swap sale day, please reach out via email and I can add it to this list so we can make your event nice and popular. As well as that, on my website, there is a list of all the model railway clubs that I am trying to update as often as possible. So if you're not on there, also reach out. And lastly, if you are in a model railway club and would like me to come down and make a video about your club, also send me an email because I'd be more than happy to help out your club get more, well, members and things like that. Anyway, this month's question. It's a bit of a follow on from last month's regarding Fremo, as a lot of you said, you'd actually be quite interested in it. Now, I understand that Nscale already has a Fremo in Australia and it seems to work quite well as I've now seen it at a couple of exhibitions, being that, yeah, there is a very easy to follow modular standard, although HO doesn't exist. So I guess my question this month is, would you like Fremo here? I'm willing to put my hand up to, I guess, lead um, a standard and see how it goes in HO scale for Australian prototype or semi prototype. If that's something you'd be interested in, please leave some feedback in the comments below with your answer. I think it's something that could be really, really great and interesting and bring a lot of people together. And I'd love to be a part of that and, and help make it a thing in Australia. So yeah, if you'd like to see that, let me know, because I would. So that's it for this episode. What are you most excited for? Personally, I'm most excited to go to three exhibitions in three days over the June long weekend in Victoria, but leave your feedback about what you're most excited for in the comments section below. Now, as always, a massive thank you to the Australian Model Railway Association in Melbourne for letting me film there. If you are interested in joining their club, there will be a link in the description below, as well as links to everything else that I mentioned during this video. Once again, a huge thank you to all the Patreons for supporting the channel. If you are interested in becoming a Patreon to gain early access to videos, there is of course another link in the description and that goes through all the different perks the three different tiers offer. And lastly, of course, if you haven't already, don't forget to be subscribed and have notifications turned on so you can keep up to date with my weekly videos. They do cover everything from model railways through to full size railways. And yeah, they come out every Saturday morning at 9 a.m. except for this video, which comes out on the first of every month or thereabouts. Anyway, thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you all again really, really soon. Hey,